As usual, we're staying in our modifyingobjects.dwg file. We've now rearranged the entrance area using our grips and our grip editing in the previous video. We're going to double click on the wheel and zoom extents again like we've done previously. And you can see that our office now is beginning to take shape. We've got our hot desking area, we've got our entrance area, but you'll notice we've got a big empty space in the bottom left corner. What we're going to do there, we're going to utilize the boundary command. Now, the boundary command is really useful because it allows you to create a polyline, which you can then calculate the area of the room with. Now, that's really good because as a facilities manager, I've had to calculate areas of rooms many times to find out the rentable area, perhaps for a landlord who wants to rent the space out, but also more importantly, to find out how much space is actually usable and whether we can fit a group of desks or people into it. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a boundary for this big space in the bottom left corner. So zoom in, pan upwards so that you can see the whole space like so. And just leave the current drafting layer, the yellow one, as it is. That's fine. You'll see why in a moment. Also, for the duration of this video, I'm going to ignore the area of these two columns. I shouldn't really. I should reduce the area of the room by the area of the columns, but I'm not going to worry about it. So I go up to the draw panel on the home tab on the ribbon and click on this fly out here. And you can see I've got hatch, gradient and boundary. Select boundary and it will bring up the boundary creation dialog box. It will prompt you to pick points in an area to create the boundary. Now island detection will pick out these little columns even though I'm ignoring them. So just leave that ticked. Object type you can use polyline or region. Polyline you tend to use in a 2D environment region you would tend to use in a 3D environment. So let's stick with polyline in this case. Boundary set, it's in the current viewport, obviously. So I now click on OK. So if I click on OK, it prompts me to pick an internal point. So I'm going to left click in this area here, like so, and it will calculate the area for me. Look at that, it's got a boundary there like so. Now that area there is highlighted at the moment with the standard blue AutoCAD highlighting. If I now press enter to finish the boundary command, it places a new polyline on the current drafting layer. So not only have I got that polyline, but also where it's worked out the areas of the columns as well using island detection to put little polylines around the columns as well. Now the benefit I have is if I need to know the area of this polyline, I can simply select it now, like so, right click and go to properties on the shortcut menu. There's the properties palette. So if I just drag that across, expand it a little bit as well so that we can see what we're doing and use the slider bar, there's the area of my polyline. I can close the properties palette and hit escape a couple of times. I can also perhaps use the list command and press enter and select my polyline again like so, press enter to confirm, and it comes up there on the command line. As you can see, there's the area and the perimeter on the command line. I can just hit escape now, and it'll lose that on the command line, and I can get on with what I'm doing. But the benefit I have is I have a polyline that fits exactly into that office space and allows me to calculate an area quickly and easily rather than having to work my way around the boundary of that office drawing a closed polyline in the first instance. So utilize your boundary command if you want to generate polylines to work out areas of your rooms in your floor plans. It's much quicker and much easier. And when you're modifying objects in your AutoCAD drawings, you want to be doing things quicker and easier rather than the long way around.